Welcome back friends. In this tutorial we will be talking about uh, sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction. This is a very huge topic actually. It is a big topic. It converts, I mean covers a lot of area. Now in this video I will be giving you a generalized idea of sexual reproduction. Now there are majorly two types of reproductive process in organism. One is asexual one, another one is sexual one. Now the asexual reproduction was very very easy and simple type whereas it only occurs to very low grade animals and uh, you know very lower class of animals and in some plants. So asexual reproduction means simple division of the cell because it occurs in uh, single cell organisms most but sexual reproduction occurs to complicated ones. It is much more complicated and it is can continuation of series of events, series of events are related with this sexual reproduction because uh, sexual reproduction is a process for rest of all the uh, individuals that are present, you know high uh, end organisms like eukaryotes, you know higher eukaryotes like human being, like other types of animals like birds, reptiles and in other type of plants like you know angiosperms, geosperms and so on. So in sexual reproduction this part of the reproduction or this types of reproduction involves in the production of, it involves the production of male and female gametes, male and female gametes. This is the very, sorry, this is, this is very interesting and very unique feature about sexual reproduction, right. In this case, it should produce certain type of cells, they are called as gametes, right. Gametes are also called as haploid cells. Haploid cells means, haploid cells, you know, normally cells are have a typical number of chromosome inside the nucleus, right. So those type of generalized cells are termed as diploid cells, di means double, ploid cells, right. And the chromosome number for all those diploid organisms are found to be 2n, right. So 2 into n, n is the number of chromosome present in haploid cell. So in diploid, it will be twice n or 2n number of chromosomes. So in, in case of sexual reproduction, we produce certain cells which contain n number of chromosome, n number of chromosomes inside, right. And there are two varieties of such cells produced, one from the male, one from the female. Now which one is, the, the one which is produced from the male is usually termed as sperm and the one which is produced from female is termed as egg or simply ovum, right. So egg is pretty much familiar to all of us because we eat eggs, right, there are, they are, I mean cells, they are larger cell actually, so they are nothing but cells and we can see them with our naked eye, so they are very big. So usually female uh, gametes or egg are really very big compared to the male type of gametes which are sperm, which are not so big, very tiny in this case, right. Now this is a most unique feature of sexual reproduction. Now in this process of sexual reproduction, as we know there are vari variations present between male and female gamete, right, you know egg is larger, right, so if I, if I say about egg, it is a large one, it contains nucleus and all the other materials, right, and the nucleus that is present inside the egg is called the egg pronucleus or the ovum pronucleus, right. But on the other hand, in case of sperms that what nucleus, they are very very smaller compared to other types of uh, cells, I mean uh, compared to eggs because in this case they look like something, some special type of structure. So let me, let me draw it, looks something like this, this and something like this. It has a long tail, long tail like that. And what is the importance of tail, I will be talking about it later. But these are, you can see the, uh, the structural difference. So not only they are different by their structure, but they are different by their functions also, right. And in some uh, organisms, 
both of these gametes are same looking like they looks alike so those type of gametes are termed as you know homogamete they are termed as homogamates example is cladophora so if you look at in case of cladophora 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 is an algae so in case of cladophora cladophora produces two types of you know uh, gamete male and female and both of these gametes for cladophora looks something same so they look sorry they look something like this and both of them has a cilia or flagella like this they have flagella like this right and inside they have some some kind of structure they have nucleus they look something like that so they are same so in case of cladophora as both the gametes male and female gametes looks same we call them homo gamete homo gamete right homo gametes okay i should check the spelling here yeah so homo gametes because homo means similar on the other hand rest of the organisms generally contain gametes they are differently looking completely differently looking gametes okay so this is uh, this is uh, true for animals as well as for plants also we generally don't find typical sperm in case of plant in case of plant we have some different structure but definitely completely distinguishable structure in male and female parts of the plant right so in some organism uh, we can find that uh, that organism can be either male or female right those type of organisms are called as unisexual organisms so these terms are very very important that's why i'm writing unisexual organisms means either that organism will be a male or so let me change the color here either it will be a male or it will be a female and there are other types of organism they are termed as you know uh, they can be i mean they have male and female characteristics both present in the same individual so this type of organisms are termed as bisexual organism because they have male and female both characteristics all together right and there are plenty of examples uh, like that you can see in some case of in several you know earthworms are bisexual because they have male and female characteristics all together and unisexual means human being common example right so so these are certain things which you can see how much complicated a sexual reproductive nature can be you know it is getting difficult and the sexual reproduction requires uh, certain organs that are dedicated for the production of these gametes either male or female right in both the case there are certain organs that are present inside for male there are their testes uh, present and for female there is ovary which produces all this egg and all these things okay and in case of uh, in case of plant species there are for the male part of the plant is generally ter termed as you know stamen and for the female part that is carpel right so so these are the terms i mean you should uh, monitor you should take care of right and so so now let's go uh, to the actual part of the sexual reproduction that is the events of sexual reproduction as i have told before that sexual reproduction is a series of complicated events linked together there are series of events and they are very much sequential so if you look at here generally it begins with you know very first stage is the gamete gamete production and this stage is termed as gametogenesis gametogenesis now the second part is the gamete transfer gamete transfer you know once the gamete is produced right from a particular type of cell in particular dedicated organ in both male and female suppose it is produced right in male it is produced inside the whole organ system of testis in case of female it is produced inside the whole system of ovary and after the production is done then the second stage is to bring those gametes together right because because the actual idea is to fusion of the gamete and which comes here at the third part and this is the most important part of all that is fusion of gametes so this is the pillar 
of sexual reproduction and the most single most e important event in the sexual reproduction there is the fusion of gametes right so for that we need to get our gametes close to each other so that they can fuse with each other so for that we need gamete to be transferred from their respected productive organ to outside of it right and to the place of uh, the gamete fusion so that thing is carried out via different measures right once we talk about this gamete transfer procedure we'll be talking about uh, details of this in later third is the fusion so once those gametes are in very close proximity with each other in that case those gametes should be fused with each other right that's called the fusion of gametes or it is also having a fascinating name and that is called as you know many different names but fertilization fertilization is termed the most interesting and important factor of sexual reproduction and once the fertilization is done this is also termed as another name that is called syngamy so once this process is done fusion of the gamete is done now this all all this so after that the fourth stage is the development of that gamete right because the gamete should be developed right so development of the that that fused fused gametes now they have a different name for the fused gametes the name for fused gametes is zygote so if you are hearing all this name for the first time it may be some difficulty for you to memorize all these terms but uh, believe me all these terms should be crystal cl clear in your mind if you want to perceive your career as a biologist in future because they are the basics of biology so once the development uh, uh, is done i mean development of zygote and this development of zygote is termed as embryogenesis because during this process embryo start to generate so embryo genesis it is called as embryogenesis right so once the development of the fused egg or embryogenesis is done after that nothing else required because after the embryogenesis we get the mature we get the mature organism so you can see if you compare my other video that is about the asexual reproduction and the stages of asexual reproduction with the sexual reproduction you can see how much complicated more complicated this sexual reproduction actually is uh, rather than the asexual reproduction so you can see it is very very difficult so four major stages are there and the main pillar is the fusion of gametes or fertilization so if we put fertilization in the middle we have some pre fertilization events remember we have some pre fertilization events so which color i should take let's take red these are pre fertilization events and after the fertilization so the only one event that is embryogenesis is called as post fertilization events so these are the two major sections of sexual reproduction so once all of this done we have the mature organism and we produce a mature organism from the parent organism so this is the whole process of sexual reproduction in the future videos we'll be discussing about each of those stages in little bit more details